Okay, I'm going to get started here. We're about two minutes in. Guys, I'm super stoked to be here. As usual, everybody knows I'm jam stoked about the jam stack, decoupled, composable, whatever you want to call it in our industry. But essentially, what we're doing here is the ability to take any backend service API and then render it however you'd like on your front end Next.js for our front end framework, which my favorite is Next.js. But for the context of this, we're going to be doing a headless e-commerce with WordPress and big commerce with my cohorts here, Brian Smith and Ross McGuire. Now, I just want to go over a few housekeeping notes before we dive into the nitty gritty of um, looking at all this cool big commerce content and WordPress content. Uh, first thing is, uh, we are going to be uploading this in onto the web on YouTube. So uh, just a couple of housekeeping etiquette alert notes. Um, please be excellent to one another. Uh, Bill and Ted, when they went on their excellent journey, they were correct. Definitely please be excellent to each other, kind, courteous. Um, in my opinion and the way I learned when I was coming up as a de developer, there is no dumb question. Go ahead and throw it in the chat or whatever um, you know opinion you have about it. And we can we can certainly talk about it. Um, so and this is also being recorded. And then uh, be kind to sh the um, shared demo resources as well. Um, okay, uh, uh, we've got all the etiquette stuff out of the way. Now today, let me just um, tell you why we're here, what our purpose is, and our goals today. Um, so we are going to we're going to read through the bullet points right here. We're going to demo data porting from big commerce to WordPress. Yes, y'all, you heard that right. The ease of migrating data is super sick, and we're going to show it to you here live today. Um, we're going to dive into the content types of what it will look like from big commerce into the WordPress admin backend. Uh, we're going to go over the blueprint front end built in Faust.js. And then there's a numerous um, plugins that actually make this work in the back end, just like uh, WordPress traditional has many plugins in its ecosystem. The Node ecosystem a lot of has a lot of NPM packages, which is the parity between the two. We've got WP GraphQL, Faust WP, Atlas Content Modeler, Atlas Commerce Blocks, and Atlas Commerce Connector for big commerce. Um, Brian Ross, did I miss any any kind of bullet points there? I'm good. Okay. Well, without further ado, it's demo time. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then I'm going to let uh, is either Brian or Ross. I think you, um, one of y'all, are going to lead the demo. So go right ahead. You got it. Hey, everyone. Uh, Brian Smith, Principal Product Manager. Um, thanks for attending today. I'm going to walk us through the demo and then also joining us, Ross, um, lead engineer from my team, to answer the, the more technical questions as we get into the deep dive portion of today. But um, let me go ahead and share screen so we can hop into that demo. Okay, um, just a couple slides to, to set us up here. So as Fran mentioned, we're, we're of course here to talk about the latest blueprint for Atlas, which really enables a whole new use case, which is e-commerce. We're integrating with the big commerce platform here. And um, just wanted to put this slide up there just to remind everybody that there, there's a really big Atlas ecosystem that we're leveraging. Um, it's all the bullets you see listed here and all the awesome looking icons over there on the right that make up everything that is the Atlas platform. And Blueprints is just one part of that. It's it's the starter project portion of that. And really our pitch to you here today is get to production faster with Blueprints. Um, you can spin these up um, in under 10 minutes. I will mention everything that we're showing you today is available to all of you. Um, whether or not you're, you have a paid Atlas account, you can always sign up for a free trial, access these Blueprints, try them out. And as is mentioned there, you know, the, the idea here is streamlining. Part of this is giving you um, examples of how we uh, recommend doing headless e-commerce, leveraging the tools from the Atlas platform, what's available in terms of APIs from Big Commerce and WP Engine. But it's also, you know, we hope 
what you can use to create your own starter project in the future. Um, the ideal outcome of, of all of these things is for you to be able to standardize on this tech stack, this set of technologies, and here's a blueprint to do that. So we're hopeful that you are able to take it, make it your own, and use it on every project that's a good fit for it. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna hop in here to the uh, demo. So I did record this just so we don't have any technical difficulties, but I, I certainly can pull it up in browser as well. And, and we'll do that as we get into some of the Q&A. But for those um, unfamiliar with what you see up here in the video, this is the WP Engine portal. So I'm, I'm in the Atlas tab here. I clicked on create new app. I'm selecting my blueprint. And for those of you that haven't um, spun up a blueprint before, you just connect that to your GitHub account, which you can do from this page, and then we create the app. Now this, this process takes um, a, just a few minutes. You'll see that like the whole video end to end is under 10 minutes as, as promised. Um, we don't have to sit here and watch you know, the next five minutes, but we can kind of um, scoot along in the video here. But you see like initially what happens is we provision the WordPress site, once that's done, um, which takes what, two, three minutes? We move into the um, Atlas app code building portion of it, which takes another couple of minutes here. Um, and then we deploy that. We deploy the, um, the starter project to the Atlas um, front end, the Atlas app itself. And so, successful i'm what six minutes into my video here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hop over to the storefront and standard looking storefront there uh, which we'll we'll go into a little bit more in depth here in a second but i do need to show you how we connect this so i'm going to go into wp admin how we connect this to big commerce so we're we're doing this with a plugin that we've built. Fran mentioned the name of it. It's, we're calling it the Big Commerce Connector. It's it does get deployed alongside um, everything else. It gets installed and activated on the WordPress site. So what we can do then is go into the connector itself. Scoot along here in the video. All right. <clears throat> you go to the configuration page. Um, these credentials that I'm in entering are just from a sandbox account that Russ and I set up. Um, you can set up a free trial if you don't already have a big commerce account and, um, and do the same thing that we're doing here. We're just going to be pulling in the product data. But once we've got that in there, we're going to confirm our connection. We get a, a toast message that says everything's cool. But now we need to sync the products. And so this is going to sync the products that we have installed on the big commerce trial site. And it's actually a developer sandbox account that we have, but you can see there's there's 13 of them. Um, this process for 13 products takes, I don't know, roughly like 30 seconds. We'll pull in the content and the images of that, and then you'll be able to see that we've got them here in WordPress. And more importantly, from our front end, we'll now have some product blocks that start showing up on the page here, um, which you can see there. I'm going to hop out of the video and actually go to the demo storefront so I can better show this to you. But here is the um, front end that you're going to get out of the box with this storefront. We're going to feature latest products, which is a category type defined on the big commerce side. And we're going to pull in the products that we want. And we've also got sales items listed down here. In this section, we're using, uh, Fran also mentioned this earlier, another plugin that integrates with the uh, WordPress block editor to actually show these um, products on the page. I'll go into detail on that here in just a second. But let's, let's just do kind of like an end-to-end -end example. So now that I've got products on the page, um, you'll see we can go to the actual shop page, see our 13 products here. I want to view one of those. Um, this is a content model, courtesy of Atlas Content Models. These are all going to get set up in the starter project. Again, like providing you examples of, you know, how you can use the tools available um, within Atlas to build out um, 
whatever type of front end experience that you want, but this is a content model. So let's pick what we want and then we will add it to the cart. You see that I've got two items in my cart now. I already had one in there, but we've added the, the jar as well as the Able Brewing system. Notice how we're still on Atlas here, where we've got a headless cart, which is something that was really important to us um, in getting this out, because not only do we have a, a storefront for you as part of this starter project blueprint, we also have um, headless product pages, product detail pages, um, you, using a couple of different methods just to give you options. You can create content models, you can use blocks, it was important to us not only to have those product pages, but also a headless cart um, because the um, you don't want too disjointed of an experience. And you'll see what I mean here in a second um, when we take you out to the checkout. So that that's kind of where we stopped with the starter project, which we kind of felt was appropriate for, for a starter. But the the checkout is going to Big Commerce. Um, we don't have the Big Commerce storefront public, so I have to put that in there. But here we are at the checkout. So everything up until the checkout is happening, headless on Atlas. Once you're ready for the checkout, um, we're redirecting you to the Big Commerce site. But you can see that everything that was in our cart shows up just as it's supposed to, with the right configuration on the Big Commerce site, ready for you to check out. Um, so everything that, that you saw up until that point of checkout was headless, was on Atlas. All those pages and um, capabilities are, are built out and um, and used uh, to create that that experience. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to, to delve in just a, a bit further here before we um, go in depth on the tech behind all of this, and that is those two plugins. So if you've used the the Atlas um, blueprints before, you'll be familiar with WP GraphQL, Faust, um, and Atlas Content Modeler. Those are all things that we're using. Um, as you can see over here, we're using GraphQL. I can show you that we have a number of content models that we've built out in Atlas Content Modeler. So when we actually you know, deploy that demo storefront for you, all these are put in there for you, um, again, as like examples of how you can do these um, product detail page models. I showed the Big Commerce connector, but that that is um, something I want to spend a little bit more time on, just to show you kind of how this is differentiated from the existing available Atlas blueprints. So this this is one big thing, and this connects us to the Big Commerce API. It enables us to do a, a sync of that product data, and this view here will actually show us what products we pulled in. You saw this briefly in the demo video, but let me go into the actual um, product content that we've brought in. Um, now you of course can get decide you know what what you want to bring in, but we are capable of bringing in all the things as you can see here, including the images from big commerce. And the the idea here again is to bring the content that we need into WordPress so that we can create content models so that we can lay out and um, you know create the front end that our, our content creators want. And then we get that data out of uh, WordPress using WP GraphQL and using Faust to build that storefront. Um, we already covered the configuration page. Those are kind of the main highlights to hear here in the Big Commerce Connector. The other thing I'll touch on is the other plugin that we have, which is the con content blocks um, here. So as mentioned, we've created a, um, a custom blocks plugin that enables you to pull in different categories of products from the Big Commerce side. Um, and these are these categories are defined on the Big Commerce side: latest products, popular products, featured products, and you can determine how many you want to display, and um, you know which category that you want. Um, latest products. The example here down the page, we're, we're using that again and um, showing the sale items there. So you can see that what the content uh, creator sees from this page is pretty much exactly what you see on the storefront as well. Um, so this is kind of an alternative to building the uh, content models, and it is a plugin that is available um, with this blueprint as well. 
All right, so I think that kind of takes us through the high level. Um, before we kind of go a bit deeper into the technology behind all of this, um, I did want to kind of briefly just give a little bit extra context of why are we doing all of this? Um, I mentioned it earlier, we're trying to enable new use cases for Atlas. Um, it's not so much that these things weren't possible before, it's just you had to do it all yourself. So we're, we're you know, our team specifically, the headless e-commerce team is looking, um, you know, composable. We want to help enable composable front ends, integrating with whatever technologies you're already using. And when that comes to e-commerce, you're most certainly going to be using some e-commerce platform. All of them have APIs available that, that we can um, use with WordPress as the headless CMS to create those composable front ends. Um, and represent um, them in any way that you want. But where where are we going with this? So this is the the public facing Atlas roadmap, which many, which many of you have probably seen before. I just highlighted here, or bolded rather, um, you know our team's focus um, as it relates to the broader Atlas roadmap. Um, Big Commerce Blueprint, which we're covering today. Um, we are working on a beta, and if you're interested in participating in this, we are exploring the concept of a, a unified storefront API that can bring together you know, multiple data sources, WordPress being one of them, Big Commerce, another use case, but even other um, third-party integrations that you might use in a composable commerce setup, such as like product reviews or um, a custom checkout. Maybe you use a you know, Stripe payment solution, all things that you would need to associate the product content with the product data, and um, potentially you would want that as a unified API available to the Atlas uh, front end. If you're interested in that, please let us know. We are beta testing that um, over the coming uh, weeks. We do have a plan to Shopify Blueprint um, up next. We are kind of going down that path of looking at um, what other integrations can we do that we know would be valuable to our audience. That's something that we've heard. If there's others that you're interested in, we'd love to hear that as well. And then kind of looking a bit further down the line in this later column, um, headless personalization localization. Atlas in general is looking at that. Um, a lot of like the details are to be determined. You see it's in our later category, but it is something that we recognize is very important to e-commerce sites and something that um, we're keen on you know, playing a part in um, you know, as you think about composable commerce with Atlas. We want to play a role in that with um, personalization and localization solutions. All right, that kind of covers um, the the demo portion of this. You know, we're happy to to jump into further details. Fran, I'll kind of turn it back over to you first. Um, if you had any follow up questions for me or Ross, or uh, things that we could go into detail on, happy to do so. Can you? Okay. You might. I'm, there I'm you are now. Yeah, okay. I'm good. Now. I hear you. <laughs> um, I actually a question kind of came in my head because I was reading an article, uh, Brian and Ross, about not only the kind of nomenclature change about this whole thing with the Jamstack, right, and decoupled, and um, the composability for your backend services, third party services, to be able to choose whatever you want on on the back end and whatever third party tools such as like Snipcart's another checkout tool that that has a great API that I've I've messed around with with headless WordPress in. Um, are did you mean Brian? You, you said like creating like a unified API. Would that have would WP Engine also potentially be creating like a composer at the almost the middle or for the front end level between these APIs, where you might be able to just expose all that data within, I guess, I guess a GraphQL endpoint or whatnot with a UI? Yeah, great question. Um, so th that specifically, the storefront API that I mentioned really is at kind of, uh, I think it was listed as beta there, but we're really more in the concept phase. So okay. this is really a concept that we're exploring, but the the idea is, um, let, let's e-commerce e is the perfect example here. So let, let's just think of it in terms of big commerce and uh, WordPress. So those, those are two different data sources. You have different data in each of those. You've seen what we've done with the connector plugin is made it um, really easy just to bring in 
product content into WordPress, which you would want to do for your content creators. Like potentially they, they want to um, have access to product images, descriptions, titles, things like that. Um, but you see, like we, we brought in all of the data to create those product content models into WordPress. Perhaps you don't have to do all of that with something like this storefront API concept. Dynam more dynamic data, like things that, that changes more frequently, price, inventory levels, things like that. Um, <clears throat> maybe that's better served um, not bringing that into WordPress at all, but rather, you know, that whatever's coming from big commerce, you know, you want to be um, coming directly from there. What we're proposing with this concept, and this is something that we're going to be doing some UX research testing on um, mm -hmm. over the coming weeks and months, really is. I want to bring together the data from the Big Commerce API with what's coming from WordPress, the WordPress, uh, in this case, the WP GraphQL API. I need a way to associate product content from WordPress with the product data. Think like the, the price and inventory. I could join those two things together on something that's common between them. Um, a SKU is probably a good example in this use case. So what, what we're proposing is an API data layer, we're essentially going to aggregate APIs, stitch them yeah. together. Stitch. In this yeah. use case, we're going to join them together on the SKU so that you have a unified API that we host that's available to the Atlas front end. That's the concept that we're exploring. Um, and yeah. if anybody's interested to participate in you know, testing out that concept, you know, we'd love to have you join us. Um, but uh, I don't, don't really have much further to, to show on that, but it is that idea of stitching together data from multiple sources. And then we would host an API that, um, you know, was essentially a unified API that was available, um, you know, to the front end developer who's building out your uh, storefront on Atlas. Yeah. I, you know, the, the great thing about this, uh, just like the value, the valuableness of this, if you will, is that there's always been that headache of bringing that, um, Teams bring commerce and content together, especially if you have that online store, but you also have content editors that need to like write, you know, a description or whatever about that product. Now this actually has a better workflow um, as far as the administrative back end. So that, that's awesome. There's a couple of questions. Hold on a second, uh, Brian and Ross. Um, Justin Wilson asked, are analytics integrations on the roadmap? Example, GA4 e-commerce. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely something that is being considered, um, you know, when, when we talk about um, composable and wanting to to make it easy to integrate all the different tools that you're using, that is one that we're thinking about. Um, we don't have anything actively prioritized, uh, you know, with, with GA or other analytics specifically, but that's the type of feedback that we're looking for, um, you know, as we do more of these integrations. And really, we're, we're just trying to make it as easy as possible to com compose the site that you want using the tools that you're already using or your clients are already using on Atlas. And and then, um, awesome. And uh, Brian McCormick asked, which platform would be recommended where the business logic is applied? Um, yeah, not sure I understand the question there with the business logic. Yeah, Brian, um, just to clarify, and I guess you can answer that in the chat, as far as business logic, do you mean like data from maybe a, a Salesforce if like, uh, or? Russ, feel free, for you, feel free to jump in. Yeah, sorry, I was muted there. Um... But yeah, I was just asking the kind of the same question, um, just around what type of business logic, um, because we have we are leveraging Faust JS on the front end, which is our own framework, um, a wrapper around Next.js, um, and sort of between the rendering the UI, um, and the cart and stuff like that, we have some business logic in there, um. So I've just linked the repo in the chat. Hopefully that has what you're looking for. But um, yeah, if you want to give us more details on the yeah. business log and um, we can see sorry about that um <clears throat> pretty broad question i just meant um like customer segments and maybe price lists um checkout and category rules like adding certain products to certain pages like not sorry 
certain products to your cart gives you a discount for certain things, you know, how would those be reflected and where would we put the rules in place in the, the headless architecture? So it might be a little, little bit complex of a question. Maybe it depends on the business, but just wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, I think uh, probably uh, in our um, version of, of this anyway, uh, it probably makes sense to have it in the um, in the blueprint front end repo. So we have some um, like logic in there that would, um, you know, for example, uh, render which um, sort of product form fields are needed for different uh, types of modifiers and variants and things like that. So we have some, um, you know, when it takes the info from big commerce and um, we render different types of UI and stuff like that. And then there's nothing to stop developers sort of extending that either within that repo or in another service to kind of uh, do some, some other processing. Are there other questions in the chat? If not, we could go a little bit deeper um, into you know, some of the, you know, how, how all this is working behind the scenes. Um, Russ, any uh, specific elements that we could dive into? To kind of give a little bit more context for you know how this you know the things that we're bringing like the connector plugin or the blocks plugin things that are a bit different than the existing atlas blueprints yeah um now just as you were describing your demo there i just uh, had a few things as well to call out just that um on the sync as well we have web hooks in place so we are um leveraging uh, we do have an endpoint in the connector plugin which um We'll sync web hooks with big commerce and you can verify in the big commerce account that these are set up so once you run an initial sync um big commerce has documentation around what kind of data is supported um via web hooks and we're supporting that in the plugin as well so once you kind of run an initial initial sync if somebody is managing pricing or um, other types of information um that will be reflected um without you having to actually manually run a, a resync um I think you covered most of the, the other things. Um, I think with Atlas Content Modeler again, that's kind of how we're persisting the the data to the WordPress database. So you know it's going through ACM and then transforming it into custom post types that we're leveraging. Um, so on the shop page, you're seeing that uh, as a direct uh, WP GraphQL request, just to come come back with a list of custom post types and render them in React components here. Whereas on the homepage, it's uh, slightly different. We kind of wanted to show examples of both ways of, of doing it. And then on the homepage, this is um, just our WordPress blocks that Brian was shown via our plugin. So you can have the option as a WordPress content editor to uh, place the blocks with the product data in WordPress and render pages that way on the front end. Or you can, uh, as a developer, just decide you want to make a, a direct query and, and render them into React components. Um, so yeah, the, the Blueprint front-end repo, the Faust repo, really does have a lot of uh, useful components in there. And as I mentioned before, uh, helper functions and things that will render different um, product form fields for modifiers and variants and things. So for example, I think it's the, um, if you go to the shop page, Brian, I think if you go to the linen uh, beige towel there. Yeah, so you can see on this one, like you have the sizes and the swatches uh, we actually have helper libraries in the front end that are, will render all these out of the box. So like whatever, if you put a text field or radio buttons, whatever big commerce sends over uh, as part of the data, we'll, we'll render that in the UI out of the box. Uh, and as Brian said, with the cart as well, uh, we did some work integrating that. So there's a lot of things here, the reviews again, for example, depending on the API credentials you've entered in. Um, users can submit reviews. You can approve them in Big Commerce, and they'll show up on your front end as well. Um, so yeah, just a couple of like um, nifty things out of the box, especially in the in the Faust side too. Um, and yeah, it's fully responsive as well, so it looks good on mobile. Um, and yeah, that's kind of all I really had noted. Happy to answer any further questions. Yeah, Russ, I did want to underscore just that the web hooks. You know that that was a really important. Um, aspect of us creating the connector plugin is we knew that any content that you were bringing into WordPress from Big Commerce, it was essential that you know those always stayed in sync and any changes were reflected immediately. Um, in that you know, with what the team has built out, you know we, that's something that you you know you can rest assured on is that 
um, changes that are made in BigCommerce will be immediately reflected, not only in the Word, on the WordPress side, but on your front end as well. Yeah, I see yeah, another question there just around the UI helper library. So there, it's actually specific to our blueprint right now. Um, I just sent a link in the chat there. Um, so this is specific to BigCommerce because um, they have a certain way of matching uh, you know, a variant or a form field to um, a variant skew or a modifier. And so we've kind of just made them specific to the big commerce uh, data at the moment. Um, there's a search functionality as well, Brian, I don't know if you want to show that. Um, it's also just a direct kind of GraphQL request again. Um, you can search orbit that would bring up a few i think yeah so that's another nifty feature of the front end part do you want to cover the documentation as well russ yeah sure um so i linked that in the chat there as well um basically there's everything you kind of need that brian walked you through uh, to get started. So we do assume that you have the sandbox account and you can deploy the blueprint. Um, so yeah, um, pretty much just talks you through how to run the sync. Um, just explains that the hosted checkout right now isn't actually part of the blueprint, but gives you some instructions on how you can actually edit the big commerce stencil team to do things like redirect back and, and stuff like that. If you want to take it a step further. Um, the Atlas Commerce blocks are also documented there just so you know how you can work with those and what the different options are. Um, we have a bunch of different options with the blocks. Like you see when it gets spun up initially, you have like sale items and recent items. You can change all that too. Like you can have it to be a category or you can have it to be specific products you want. Um, and then there's this, a troubleshooting step, which will will contribute to, you know, like as we come across some things, some common uh, you know, pitfalls or whatever. Um, yeah, these should be able to answer some questions. Um, and yeah, that's really it for now. It's it's um, it's there on the developers at wpengine.com site. Great, thanks for that, Russ. Yeah, no worries. Just another question another there. Question. Uh, yep. Dynamic block rendering. Um. Could you maybe give me a bit more details about yeah. that? Yeah, I was curious what you mean, uh, Jonathan, by dynamic block rendering in Faust. Okay, um, I was just, I, I saw you had a plugin for the block and you were showing, illustrating it on the front end. So I was wondering if, if the front end is just hard coded to pull in that data from the API or if it's like, since that block is on a page that, oh. That Faust is rendering it because it's on the page. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Faust is rendering just the content of that page. Um, so whereas on the shop page, um, it's rendered via GraphQL request to get the products as post types. On the home page, it is actually the entire page coming from WordPress and these pages or these products are part of that uh, HTML that gets sent. So those are the actual blocks that are added to the page. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. We've been doing that in our product, but I didn't realize Faust had had that already. Thank you. Yeah, no. Sure thing. Yeah. So, um, I mean. I guess the thing to to mention here is that in this view on the the homepage, you know, this is just the HTML output, but um, we do know the Faust team is working on. Um, I don't know if they have an official name for this, but it, they're they're thinking of it as kind of a, a React Gutenberg bridge, so that um, blocks that were created on the um, block editor side, Gutenberg side, could be associated with React components on the front end. I think that's that's a work that's in progress. Fran, I don't know if you have any more details on that. Um, yeah, Ross and I were, were. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they're 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 definitely. Uh, you, you're spot on on that, Brian. As far as like actual, um, it's it's actually 
uh, that that feature you can start playing with it right now. I have to get a link to the uh, um, the repo and I'll throw it in the chat. But um, they're constantly iterating on it. But right now you can you can use it. You can use that uh, feature. Nice. So over time, as more of those capabilities um, become enabled, you know, those are things that we'd like to try to incorporate into, you know, future iterations of our blueprints, um, you know, so that you're you're able to use all of the the latest features, you know, from various parts of Atlas. Yeah, I think one other thing I could probably mention as well is that um, when we build the site, so we just use the static site generation. So uh, that's why everything's super fast on the front end. Um, but then if you sort of make any changes to products or anything like that, we have a rule that for the home page, the shop page, and the search pages, we're using the uh, incremental static regeneration. So um, you don't actually have to go and do a like huge, or uh, sorry, uh, a rebuild of the whole site. Um, you know, I can't remember off the top of my head what exactly we've set it to uh we've set it to five <laughs> so um i think it might be refreshes um but yeah these will update accordingly um based on that one of the things that i wanted to mention too um this is kind of a question for the audience and it's okay if you don't have an answer today just kind of you know take this with you and and we'd love to hear you know kind of your your thoughts on it but as mentioned earlier kind of in my slides you know, really where we want to go with these is sure like we're providing you lots of examples of how to do these things on atlas and that's that's helpful hopefully and and you know we hope it's interesting but where we'd really like to get with these blueprints is that they are something that you can take customize and reuse from project to project you know where appropriate um you know ideally we're able to offload some of that boilerplate code, um, you know, do some of the functions that you don't want to do or don't have time to do. Uh, really what our aim with all of these starter projects is, and, you know, the, the Faust team is working on one of these as well, a new, a new blueprint as well. And that is, um, we really want you to get started faster on these projects and we want them to be, um, as, you know, more predictable. Um, we want you to be able to kind of outsource some of that complexity to the Atlas platform and the things that, you know, we're able to do on there um, so that you can focus really on, you know, building the bespoke and um, composable front ends that you and your um, clients are looking for. So really hoping that this can be a means of you standardizing on this type of tech stack and, um, you know, not, not just a, a thing that you can learn from, but kind of the question for the group really is, um, what would it take? What else would it take, you know, for you to um, standard, not only standardize on Atlas, but use these types of blueprints from project to project? Um, you know, feel free to answer that in the chat if you have one. But, um, you know, if it's if it's not an answer you have today, we, you know, Ross and I would love to hear from you in the future um, as we think about these things more. Thanks for that, Justin. APM and analytics. Yep, yeah, that's good feedback for us. Cool. All right, Fran, that might be the bulk of what we have to cover today. I don't know if you had any other um, things that you wanted to. Um... No, that's uh, that's that's it for me for the life of me. I'm trying to find the uh, React uh, Gutenberg block repo, the GitHub link. I can't find it. Yeah. Um, Sam shared it. Fran, okay. In cool, the cool. chat. Thanks, Sam. There it is. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Cool. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's all I had. Um, the, the one thing is, um, as far as like a uh, collateral is concerned, um, we'll leave uh, some of our uh, links to all the uh, information um, in a. Uh, I guess we're gonna we do this by email, Sam, or um, when this is over, and we'll leave it to the YouTube channel too. And then also, um, we're, we're having uh, decode. Uh, come up on, I believe it's March 21st, I believe. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'll find, I'll send you all the um, information on that. And Decode is our, uh, essentially our a developer uh, driven centric um, 
um, our our developer uh, uh, conference. Sorry, and that's it. Grant, since you mentioned that, um, did want to let everybody know we will have a session at Decode where we talk more about this um, and and both an agency and their client that we've partnered with that will be using this. They'll kind of be our first headless e-commerce use case. Um, the client is launching on Atlas hopefully later this month and um, the, the agency will be there at Decode um, to talk with us about how they're using these connector tools, how they're using the blueprint, and how they're using Atlas um, to launch our first, you know, truly headless um, customer. And um, I think there'll be a great case study, um, you know, for you all. All right. If there's no more questions, thanks everybody for coming. And uh, until next time, um, happy coding, y'all. Thanks, friend. Thanks, everyone.